Jimmy Midnight here with another special report. Brought to you by Pepsi-Cola. Unlike the other guy, ours doesn't have cocaine. And the only thing more American than baseball, apple pie, and telling other countries what's what is Hershey's chocolate. Also brought to you by the Hershey Company, because I have no shame. The history of the Hershey Company begins with the man Milton S. Hershey, who was born in the small rural farming community of Dairy Township, Pennsylvania in 1857. The Hershey's were members of Pennsylvania's Mennonite community, and at the time of Milton's birth, the town numbered just north of 2,000 people. Milton's family was frequently on the move, and as a result, young Hershey only completed the fourth grade. But Milton was overflowing with grit and gumption as a result of his early days working the family farm. And after losing his job at a German-English newspaper, he took up an apprenticeship at a candy maker in Lancaster. The 14-year-old wannabe mogul showed a knack for the candy business, and after a four-year apprenticeship with the esteemed Joseph Royer, Milton opened his own confectionery concern in Philadelphia, the birthplace of liberty. After his Philly business went belly up, he attempted two more ventures in New York and the stomping grounds of Capone himself, Chi-Town. Milton failed both times, but along the way he gained valuable experience, including training at the most famous American chocolatier at the time, Hyler's in Manhattan. From there, Milton's fortunes began to turn around. Having earned his stripes many times over, Hershey returned to Lancaster in 1883 and opened the Lancaster Caramel Company, which was a wild success. Especially after a traveler placed a huge bulk order for our former colonial overlords across the pond. Milton refined and mastered his caramel enterprise with the addition of fresh milk, but the budding tycoon had a wandering eye, like every man saddled with the same broad for an extended period of time, and he'd soon realize his true life's calling. In 1893, Chicago hosted the World's Columbian Exposition, held to honor the 400th anniversary of the voyage of Christopher Columbus, whose impeccable character and spotless reputation will never be sullied. The Chicago World's Fair was a sprawling 690-acre expo which spotlighted American exceptionalism and a burgeoning view arts neoclassical design principles. The fair drew 46 participating countries and would eventually attract 27 million visitors over nearly six months of operation. At the time, it was by far the largest World's Fair, and amongst all its architectural, technological, musical, and artistic exhibits, it debuted quintessential American grub like cream of wheat, juicy fruit gum, Quaker oats, and Pabst Blue Ribbon. But for Milton S. Hershey, it was the coming out party for chocolate. Enamored with the Kraut's chocolate-making machinery, Hershey purchased the equipment and began making his own chocolate confections. By 1900, Milton decided to focus exclusively on his chocolate ventures, so he sold his caramel business for one million, or about 32 and a half million clams in today's dough. That same year, Milton began production on the very first Hershey's Milk chocolate bars, but the best was yet to come. In 1903, the same year as the first World Series, the first Western film, and the first sustained motorized aircraft flight, Milton returned to Dairy Church to build a new factory, founding the planned community of Hershey, Pennsylvania for his workers and their families. While company towns weren't unknown, Hershey had beautiful tree-lined streets and single and two-family brick houses with modern amenities like electricity, indoor plumbing, and central heating. And residents had access to a public trolley system and a free public school. And later on, golf courses, a community center, a hotel, sports areas, and a zoo. But the real jewel of the town launched three years later when Hershey Park opened its doors to provide quality leisure for residents of the sweetest place on earth. Today, this fully functional theme park welcomes over 3 million visitors from around the world. It's confined to tribute to Milton Hershey's all-American entrepreneurial spirit. Over the next couple decades, Hershey introduced additional chocolate staples like the miniature conical-shaped Hershey's Kiss in 1907, Mr. Good Bar in 1925, and Hershey Syrup in 1926, while brands like Jolly Ranchers, Twizzlers, Almond Joy, York Peppermint Patties, Reese's, Kit Kat, Payday, Skinny Pop, and a lot more would eventually fall under the broad umbrella of the Hershey Company. When the stock market crashed in 1929, Milton Hershey initiated the Great Building Campaign to help Hershey PA weather the financial storm. And as a result, the town was almost completely inoculated from the ruinous social and economic effects right outside their doorstep. First off, Hershey donated his neoclassical mansion as a clubhouse to the new country club, and the 73-year-old lived in two rooms on the second floor. Over the next decade, town laborers completed a lavish Italian Renaissance-style community building, they built Hotel Hershey, which sat atop the newly constructed Pat's Hill, and a swell assortment of structures like a junior-senior high school, a sports arena, a new corporate headquarters, a 15,000-seat outdoor stadium, and a cultural and educational foundation for the town's residents. Because of all these projects, and especially since building materials were dirt cheap, 
First, she maintained a 100% employment rate for 600 laborers, and the company didn't give a single employee the old heave-ho. The town stood in such stark contrast to the rest of the country that in 1937, Newsweek dubbed Hershey Candyland, City of Dreams, where residents pay no local taxes, and a candy factory gives them their jobs and their luxurious clubs, schools, churches, and shady streets. Once the Depression ended, all of Hershey's building projects helped to become a major tourist attraction. When the crowds began their invasion of Europe in 1939, kicking off the Second World War in as many decades, our boys in uniform had much better child than the days of crummy army crackers that were hard enough to crack a tooth. Though, hardtack was actually a great way to soothe the nerves. Spend enough time with that stuff and the prospect of buying the farm doesn't seem all that bad. At the outbreak of WW2, our ace food scientists had dreamt up letter-coated field rations that featured top-grade all-American beef, fresh fruits and vegetables, and was fortified with more flavor than a scrumptious steak dinner, more vitamins than a bowl of oatmeal, and made John Q. Flatfoot and Susie Homemaker wish they could join the fight just to share in this fine cuisine. Or at least that's what the boys at the War Department told me. The Combat uh, Ration C, which I have here a box, is designed to take care of a man in combat for one day. Let me show you the contents of this box. There are a total of eight cans. Three cans of... I didn't eat that well in my own wedding! In addition to the C rations and K rations, the military also commissioned an emergency ration to take the form of a chocolate bar. And so the War Department came knocking on Hershey's door. The military's requirements for their envisioned D ration were simple. It had to be four ounces, be high in energy, able to withstand high temperatures, and so troops would only eat them while they were in a pickle, it should taste a little better than a boiled potato. For the temperature requirement, Hershey's added raw oat flour, which absorbed most of the cocoa fat and made the bar more solid, raising the melting point of the chocolate from 92 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The final ingredients were chocolate liqueur, sugar, skim milk powder, cocoa butter, oat flour, and vanillin, which resulted in a heavy paste that had to be pressed rather than poured into bowls. Unfortunately, they were a bit too peachy keen on the military's last condition, and most troops reported that they would have been happier with a boiled potato. The bar's high melting point made it hard as a brick, so troops had to use knives to shave off slices, and the sugar apparently did little to disguise the bitter taste of the dark chocolate. The package actually warned against eating the D-ration too quickly, or it could cause a stomach ache. Hershey's became an indispensable part of the war effort. In 1939, the Chocolatier produced about 100,000 D-ration bars per day, but by 1945, production lines on three floors of the plant were pumping out 24 million units per week. In 1943, Hershey's produced a special tropical version of their D-ration bar for the Pacific Theater that was extra resistant to the heat and tasted mildly better. Hershey's tropical chocolate bar would eventually go to the moon with Apollo 15 astronauts in 1971. As a result of their invaluable contributions to the war effort, Hershey's was awarded the Army Navy E Production Award in August 22, 1944. In presenting the award, Major General Edmund Gregory noted that the men and women of Hershey Chocolate Corporation have every reason to be proud of their great work in backing up our soldiers on the fighting fronts. By the end of the war, Hershey's had received five such honors. Unfortunately, that same year, Milton Hershey followed FDR into the great unknown and passed away at the age of 88, leaving behind a chocolate empire and town bearing his name, and a long and generous history of philanthropy. In 1909, Milton and his wife Catherine had established a school for orphan boys, and three years after Catherine's premature death in 1915, he endowed the school with his entire fortune of Hershey Chocolate Company stock. Even after Milton's death, the company continued his charitable works, founding the Milton Mass Hershey Medical Center in 1963 with a $50 million grant from the Hershey Foundation. In 1950, Hershey's adopted the bold, snazzy insignia we'd all associate with the brand today. And in 1973, they became the first confectionery to add nutritional info to their label. Though it may have contradicted their original Hershey's bar label, which said a nutritious confection. In 1963, Hershey's acquired the H.B. Reese Candy Company, officially bringing Reese's Peanut Butter Cups into the fold. And over the next several decades, Hershey's purchased a number of confectionery superstars like Twizzlers in 1977, the U.S. operations of Almond Joy Mounds and York Pepper and Patties in 1988, and Jolly Rancher in 1996. And through it all, Hershey's has upheld its founder's sense of civic duty and altruism, 
being a founding member of the World Cocoa Foundation, which invests in West Africa to support cocoa farmers and improve cacao agriculture. More recently, Hershey's made Diversity Inc's list of the top 50 companies for diversity. If there is a giant confectionery in the sky, and I know that's most folks' idea of heaven, Milton S. Hershey is surely looking down with a huge smile on his face, happy that his company and life's work are in good hands. Thanks for joining me for another special report. Please subscribe to my televisual program, and be sure to do your patriotic duty and buy some war bonds or the commies win. This is Jimmy Midnight signing off.